wanted to do a quick demo on Modernizer. Um, a few weeks back, I was playing the pattern, which is an HTML5 feature for input. And it was working well until I hit a browser where the pattern didn't recognize, you know. Um, so I started doing a little research and I found out Modernizer is a pretty simple um, tool to go and test all browsers. And I was trying to implement it in the next features to um, uh, make my code go across all browsers. And so it's a really lightweight JavaScript uh, micro code, they call it micro. Um, in a nutshell, it's modernizer is a JavaScript library that detects the HTML5 and CSS3 features in the user's browser. So that does it every time the you hit the page. It loads that script and it tests, uh, tests your browser for HTML5 features. Uh, it's 174 tests. And it does it in a few milliseconds. And how this is different than a coder writing code, um, it puts booleans in a, in a namespace or a an object where you can just call it based on the modernizer, like modernizer or geolocation, and it give you a Boolean true or false. Is this browser handle that? Uh, same with pattern or canvas, and I'll show you some of the examples here in a little bit. Um, micro JavaScript file to include the main page. Um, the test features include, or instead of using the globals, what I was mentioning earlier, like the Windows, uh, we ran into issues with file reader. I think it does test for file reader, but then you have other problems after that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it also populate your uh, cascading style sheet. You may want to actually like put it on the Don't answer. Uh, so you can have two references to classes in your CSS file that would say, hey, handle it this way if it's Canvas, handle it this way if it's not Canvas. It's called progressive coding. You're, you're, you're coding for the latest HTML5, and then you're handling the exceptions. So the, the whole code is, hey, it doesn't work in IE8. Well, you don't reference your code not working in a particular browser. You code based on a particular HTML feature, HTML5 feature. Uh, so then, if that feature is not available, you write the exception to that feature. Instead of worrying about all the browsers and how they react, you just worry about the feature itself. Uh, let's see. I'm going to just kind of demonstrate a simple test. Uh, here, you just load it, just like you load any other. JavaScript. Um, test to see the canvas is supported. Very simple. You just call the global. It looks true or false there. And handle it one way if it's HTML5, and handle it another way if it's not there. And so most of your code would just be the opposite. Just just handle it if it's not. You're coding for HTML5, so you just assume that that's, that's your environment you're coding for. And then you can uh, handle the, how to handle it if it's not there. Um, easiest way to explain modernizer is just to show you all 174 tests are just done in this browser. So you can see it just populates uh, feature detection for CSS. Okay. Feature detection for HTML5. <laughs> <laughs> that way you just kind of...
So there's my input pattern that I needed. So if the input pattern wasn't there, you could you could write code that input on on the page, grab its pattern, do a regular expression based on that pattern, and return true or false, and simulate the default behavior of HTML5. So you can't even tell the difference. So uh, on the submit button, so you capture the submit event, is when the valid validation check is done on an HTML pattern. You can you can start that event. Uh, I mean, you can kind of like check validation on your own anytime you want. Um, but on submit is a default behavior of the pattern uh, to do validation just on the client side. So you can simulate that just by writing. If you don't have pattern, just do it this way. Right. Um, is there any limitation of the ID versions? Can you kind of work? No. Yeah, it'll work. Yeah, in fact, I guess I'll, I'll demonstrate that real quick. So as you can see, 10, if we start stepping, we start seeing less and less things that are True, start seeing more red things right, for IE9. Now, one thing that it does, um, Chris was talking about it being feature driven as opposed to more the benefit of that is, is what you care about when you're calling the function is that the feature works. You don't care what browser is, you don't want to have to, to specify if, uh, you know, MSI 8 or 9 or 6 or what have you, then do this. You just say if this feature doesn't exist, then do this. And the system will figure out if it needs to do that, regardless of what browser you're talking about. Right. Yeah. So yeah, let me just go ahead and step back to IE8 because there's some people here that want IE8 to work. So you get a lot of red X's. So you can not same thing. Progressive coding, you're not just coding it to work for one of the benefits the way models are going to encounter the same problem you do with specific things. So along with the if doesn't work for this browser, they provided a lot of this is what you can do to get it to work. So you basically supply the people and then you can in you can I think they're and a polydirect <laughs> a problem with a particular browser specific to that browser to give the capability that all the this kind of Say our browser, our system works with the current. Oh, and by the way, we've done a little extra work to make sure it should work for all the others. And in theory, this kind of actually starts solving the real problem of the whole browser version thing across the board. Um, in practice, I'm not sure if it if it's fully up to that, but it's not. It's a really good approach for this. Um, we're using it specifically to support. Um, the file API is a feature we absolutely need that isn't supported in IE 8 or 9. Or is yeah. it supported in IE 9? 8 and 9. 8 and 9. So by using Modernizer and we build this polyfill, yeah. we can actually correct that. One of the issues is the polyfill in this case is not just simply, it doesn't work in all cases. It requires some extra work on your side. Uh, in the case of file API, you may have to write a PHP or Python script that loads the file into the server and then sends it back to the browser, which I think what it does, right? Yeah, file uploader. Um, it has a file so reader it does, extension. So it would be great if they could just say, oh, include this and it'll work for all browsers in all cases, but you can't quite, it's not quite that easy, although in a lot of cases it is. I mean, 
and a lot of these things that you just include the poly pill and it solves right. The See, it, I, it's just getting really messy as we have more and more versions and support older and older versions. They need to fall off so that eventually you don't have support for those features and then your code will still work no matter what. So that, that's the idea of progressive code. Right. You're going towards the future. Um, this is so. important in JavaScript. It also can be used um, in as we move forward in things like Angular JS and stuff like that. I think this is important to make sure we work with the right set of browsers. Yeah. So, two other features I wanted to add is um, yep, no uh, JS. So, like a JSON uh, in it to your yep note will allow you to load other things that you know are going to work for that browser. So if it does have geolocation, then load this JavaScript, otherwise load the uh, exception tool. So the exception might have in geolocation is uh, allow them to enter their zip code if they don't have GPS or or if they haven't enabled it on the computer. They have a uh, IP. A geolocation is pretty pretty robust. It'll look at your GPS if you have it, or it'll look at, and you have permission, or it'll look at the IPs. Um, but nowadays, almost they're starting to move more and more towards the permission base, especially in geolocation. You go to any app nowadays, and it'll ask you, do you want to give access to it? Well, this type of test will test if you, not even the browser, but if you've given the right access to the browser and then do the right thing. Right. I noticed my uh, weather the other day. It, it didn't have permission, so it asked me to enter the zip code. So, um, and then a conclusion is that, you know, become a progressive coder. And assume HTML5 and CSS are there. And we'll examine it. Just to just clarify, one of the things you said at the very beginning of the presentation is to test whether you know, the browser has a feature. So, one way you can test or use a tool called Karma, but actually will run your code against all those features you're using on the code instances. Yeah, this solves a little bit different problem. It, exactly, and that's the point I wanted to clarify. So, it's not a test framework, it's a, it's a it's very different than it's like modernizer. The modernizer itself is is a framework to give you access to what to, to, for you to understand in your code whether or not a particular thing has a feature or doesn't. It's not trying to test to make sure your code works across all browsers. It tests that specific browser that someone's using to determine what path on the code to follow. Yeah, it's real time, so it's 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 production ready. Um, Tester. tester. What I mean by tester is like if you try and open an IEA, how are we going to behave? Pretty much a lot of your features are just going to say, hey, this feature, you're not going to see the graph or something if it's a canvas. Or you can simulate a canvas through Flash or something. But it, it's so you can, one. or you, if you have that Flash available, then you can, you can either say, hey, upgrade your browser or do all the development effort to create the the workaround, the polyfill. What about in the slow connection? Does it slow down? Slow? Yeah, the connection is very slow. Does it slow down? Or no, this this, is, this loads within the first um, very small uh, milliseconds. Yeah, and the, I, I, the difference between using like the the way coders go in doing it for browsers is the hack. So you got all these hacks all over the place. This this gives you one central way of doing the What's chat hack. <laughs> yeah, it's one central yeah, hack. That is a good way to describe it. It's yeah. the central it's hack that's already, perhaps. yeah, it's already uh, but well the, tested. But question about it, it does speed. it have a test for slow connection? The, the, the oh, I don't know. Like, if oh, you have a slow connection, then do this. I don't think so. But I, Are there the yeah, patterns I, available, like checking for 508 browsers or excluding or... I think that's beyond the scope. This is that's this is to get karma. Karma yeah. test all the browsers and say whether your website is working and show you the ones that failed. You can go, oh, okay, I guess I need that feature failed in this one. It's not a test framework. 
No, I think yeah, you know, then you would go back in and write. I this. know where you're going to use not that. Okay. We'll not go and say, ooh, this this uh, this uh, reader supports five words, therefore I'll include the five words and say anything like that. Okay. Um, no, this is specifically focused on the fact that older browsers don't support HTML5 as well as they should. Mm -hmm. So they sat down, some people sat down and said, look, we're going to create a framework to make it easy to fix the problems across browsers. So that people, instead of coding for specific browsers, they code for the most modern browser, and then they're by using these library features, and there's a ton of them, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they can fix the problems of older browsers. So if you say, right. okay, I'm using SVG, mm -hmm. for example, you could, I bet you there are polyfills for SVG that will correct things for older browsers that yeah. HTML5 doesn't have. Now, you're using the jQuery SVG, which I think... Yeah, that's the one that I'm supposed to do. I think that one already... This does do a test for SVG. But um, to get to a, a better scenario, your question is a lot of code, legacy code says, okay, if I eat a, mm -hmm. then do this. Right, and then right. you've got another nested if inside there. If not I E 10, but I E 9, then start doing it this way. And then your code looks like this. Right, right. And what Modernizer does is get rid of all that nested if and just say, hey, if you... To do a canvas, just do canvas. There's a separate need or for do it tool. this way. So right. it's like get rid of all those questions. The test, and when I say test, I mean it, it's already done all those tests for you. In fact, the, in the milliseconds that it loads, it actually tries to put a div on there, tries to put a canvas on there, and if it can't, then it turns that variable false. So that when you try to use canvas, it goes, no, I can't use canvas. So it already, it's what I mean by test is, is it actually does test your browser. Right, right. But yeah. the, to with the 508, they often have custom browsers that they have no need for oh, certain features because, yeah, yeah they don't need flash so like because they a, a reader see. does not display things on the page. A, a reader goes through the page, looks for certain things, and literally reads it to you. So if you're completely blind, you can get some heads or tails out of websites. Okay, I don't know how well modernizer is going to work with a reader like that. I think that's outside of the of the realm of what they're considering as as the, the problem set. Um, okay, there are test framework tools like Karma or I think Selenium would qualify into this category as well, which will go in and you write code and you say test this against these browsers, mm -hmm. and then it literally pulls up the various browsers and runs the test and gives you the results. Right. So that way you can check to see if your code works against each and every browser. Yeah. That's a different problem than the problem this is trying to solve. Yeah, this is not a tester at all. No. The word, the reason I put the word test in there is that right when you load, it tests your browser to populate its namespace with yes and no, true or false, or maybe. Yeah, I'm just thinking with behavior, if you could detect one of those. Oh, we, that's a, that's a totally and different say, way. Just well, there's, step step there's several open source codes that you can get that will test your your app based mm -hmm. on 508 and stuff uh -huh. like that. If you just no, no, Google no, no, open source What Tracy's talking about is a totally different approach, which I actually think is better than the 508 testers, and that is you basically write something in your code that says if a 508 reader, then instead of displaying this oh, page, read it out to them. Present a totally separate page. Yeah, just some uh, text to them that doesn't have things that they. That would be use. a better approach, mm -hmm. to be honest. But that's not the approach the world is taking now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Time. Yeah.